Greetings, my name is Neo Second, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play on Resident Evil 2 DualShock version. I just got finished playing the Resident Evil Director's Cut for the PlayStation 1, and I figured I might as well go ahead and start playing Resident Evil 2. Now, this is uh, my uh, second favorite Resident Evil game on, in the entire series that I played, the first being Resident Evil 4, which coincidentally happens to be uh, the first Resident Evil game I ever played from start to finish, back when it first came out for the GameCube. I managed to play this uh, a, few, a couple, a year or two after I played Resident Evil 4 when I managed to find a used Nintendo 64 and a copy of the N64 version to uh, Resident Evil 2. And I had fun with this game. It, out of all the uh, classic style Resident Evil games that I played from start to finish, I definitely like Resident Evil 2 the best. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just play the original game on normal mode. Resident Evil. I'm also starting Claire's route first, and then I'm going to do Leon's route afterwards. So let's just go ahead and just jump right into it. A bizarre incident occurred in the outskirts of an American suburb called Raccoon City. It was later revealed that the terrible disaster had been caused by the T-Virus, a mutagenic toxin created by the international enterprise Umbrella Incorporated for use in bioweapon experiments. The Raccoon City Police Department's Special Stars Unit immediately began investigation in the the case was apparently closed, thanks to the efforts of STARS members Chris Redfield and Jill Valentine. But the Umbrella Corporation's experiments were far from finished. But of course, why would they stop at just the mansion? Anyone here? Obviously not. Hello? Uh, hello? <gasps> Look, I'm sorry I bothered you, okay? Just don't come any closer. Are you listening? Stay out here. Head to the police station. It'll be a lot safer. Hello, Leon. There! Buckle up. Okay. What's going on? I arrived in town, and the whole place went Great. insane. The radio's out. You're a cop, right? Yeah. Oh, I don't First know. First day on the job. The Great uniform, cop. the Thanks squad Leon car. Nice to meet you. Mine's Claire. Claire Redfield. 
I came to find my brother, Chris. Hey, could you open the glove box? Sure. There's a gun inside. Better take it with you. Really should have checked the back seat before getting you in. Okay. Still in one piece. <gasps> hey, that maniac's got a whip. Run! I'll meet you there. Okay. They were parted by an unescapable destiny. This is just the beginning of their worst nightmare. Well, first the mansion, now the city streets. Things just keep getting worse as far as the zombies are concerned. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, wasn't there a note coming in here? Whatever, I don't see anything. So, Claire Redfield, I hope that you are definitely the smart crap. I hope that throughout all your life you were definitely the smarter of the two sib of the sibling, you know, the sibling duo. Between you and Chris, because your brother wasn't exactly all that bright, and yet he somehow became a cop and of an elite uh, police force, no less. Freeze! Who are you? What are you doing here? Don't shoot! I'm a human! And to answer your question, seeking shelter. Ooh, sorry about that, babe. I thought you were one of them. I don't know, I'm not bloody What's and mad at What's going on in this town? Hold on. I ain't got no clue, darling. By the time I noticed something was wrong, the entire city was infested with zombies. That means they either they either spread very quickly or you were very unobservant. Right until the problem was smack in, the f in your face. But don't you worry, girly. You'll be safe in here. I'm keeping a close eye on things. Looks like you're just staring at the wall to me. Case is broken, there's nothing useful inside. Yeah, it looks like to me you're just staring at literally anything else other than the rest of the store. Got some handgun ammunition. Might as well check my inventory while I'm, uh... Okay, yeah, there we go. A Browning HP, manufactured by FN Belgium. It uses nine Parabellum rounds. So gone are the 3D models for items. Real shame, to be honest. A combat knife. It could come in handy. Nine, nine times 19 parabellum rounds that can be used for either the HK VP70 or Browning HP. So we definitely have a different handgun that we can use later. Go and buy that item description. And a lock pick. I can unlock the simple locks of this. So, like Jill, you are also likely a master of unlocking, which is real good to know. Unlike Leon, I'm sure. Files, map. It's been a little while since I played this game as well, so I need a little bit of time here to get used to things again. 
but I doubt it'll take me too long. Especially with me having just gone off playing Resident Evil Director's Cut. Paper dated September 18th. It looks irrelevant. Oh really? Why don't you read it? It might very well be relevant. Now, are you sure you were keeping a close eye on things, sir? Honestly, completely, positively sure. Case is broken. There is nothing useful inside. Because it looked to me like... Well, you failed at, on delivering on that promise big time. Crap. Come on, go down. Doesn't look like as though we have a lock-on feature in this game, unlike the director's cut with uh, Resident Evil 1. My, aim, my aiming's gonna have to be a little more on the manual side. What are you looking at? Okay, you're just staring at the corpses. I thought there was like an item there or something. He has stopped breathing. I imagined having your guts out would do that to you. The streets are no longer secure. When were they secure to begin with? Let's take the bow gun. A powerful bow gun primarily used to hunt large game. Well, it's not a shotgun, but I'll definitely take it. Hey, 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 hey. Hey. The music stopped. You should have been dead. Don't do that. That was rude. I don't see anything else here that's useful or anything remotely informative. All right, I'm going to go ahead and move on. Uh, sp spoiler alert for the first game, in case you uh, want to uh, avoid spoilers, but, um... Maybe I should have used the. Maybe we should have used a bigger bomb at the mansion to blow things up over there, just to ensure that the virus from that game didn't wouldn't come back in any way. Assuming, of course, that you know, playing this for the first time, you would think that obviously it must have cut. What's going on here must have come from the mansion. go down. Anyway, uh, spoiler alert, over. Crap. Damn you, muscle memory. Okay, how's my, uh, how's my ammo? Okay, I'm going to just save my shots for... Get off me! For when I absolutely need them. To think that all this was essentially foreshadowed by 
unknown monsters, or in the case of what we learned in quickly starting with the first game, packs of vicious dogs. Who would have suspected that attacks in the in the Arkley Mountains and nearby forest areas was just foreshadowing to all the bullshit that we seem to be dealing with now? It's not working. Okay, go. I hear munching. And I don't think it's over in this diner over here. your shirt man come to think of it okay I guess you still got some of your shirt left it's just very little bit on your right side so though I can't remember how long did would how long did it exactly did it take for the virus to spread throughout the city until it created this zombie apocalypse. Because I don't think it was very long. There's no sign of life. No sign of life. Got a suitcase right here, but it's not letting me interact with it anyway. Guys, it's too dangerous to go back to this. Well, you won't get any argument from me on that. I don't see anything here, so there's probably nothing out anywhere out here. Still, I might as well check over here real fast. Nope, nothing at all. At least they improved the uh, zombie noises, I think, to where they don't sound quite as goofy. What a very grand police station I've just walked into. I don't remember. Did this game elaborate on why the police station looks the way it does in universe? In case it does in like a memo or something, I'm going to just keep my mouth shut on that for now. An old fountain. Something is written here. To obtain the key to open your heart, I'll wait for the unicorn, the beautiful beast.
One reason I've also decided to I want to uh, do a covering of this game is because, well, within less than a year's time from now, last I checked, we're going to be getting the Resident Evil 2 remake on our hands for the PlayStation 4, maybe the Xbox One as well, and PC. So, in case I get to uh, play that game almost as soon as it comes out, I want to play this game here so I can compare, compare, and contrast the differences between the original Resident Evil 2 and the remake, because from what little I've seen of it in gameplay trailers, Remake 2 just looks amazing. And I really look forward to playing it. Door lock service. Hall side doors locked. The doors can be unlocked by a card key. So just any card key? Or is it a specific card key? Specify, please. Anyway, uh, we got ink ribbons. But, unlike the first game, we only get two at a time this time. So... I think even less saves than what we had, what we could potentially get. At least this time around. So I gotta be even more careful of how I save my game. But... I'm pretty sure it's going to, when it comes to me actually saving my progress, I doubt it's going to be any more frequent than the first game, so I really don't see this being a problem. Let's see what's in here. Hang in there. Are you the only officer left in the building? Uh, who are you? Claire. Claire Redfield. I'm looking for my brother Chris. We lost contact with him over ten days ago. Chris. Jill Barry. Every last Star's team member has disappeared. We should have listened to them. What happened? About two months ago, there was this incident involving these zombie-like creatures. Only two months. In a mansion located in the outskirts of this city. Chris and the other stars members discovered that Umbrella was behind everything. At the risk of their own lives. But no one believed them. <sighs> Are you okay? Don't no. worry about me. Obviously not. Just rescue the survivors in the other rooms. Here, take this key card. You should be able to unlock the doors in the hall with this. Now go. But... Just go. I think you okay. should listen to him. Just hang in there. I'll be back soon. Bring your first aid kit with you while you're at it. Or a first aid spray. Someone tells me he really does not want to be helped. So yeah, I'm trying to avoid any information outside of like the one trailer or two for Res for uh, the second for Resident Evil Remake Two Two Remake. So when I do fi finally get a chance to play it, I'll be as relatively blind as possible. I think my experience of the game will be best enjoyed with that. Okay. Oh yeah. Right. Got it. To remember, it's the... Not the start button. To access inventory. Plastic card. It reads, Hall Electronic Lock. Yeah, I got a little ahead of myself. Forgot to unlock the doors. Okay, I guess I can't use it this way.
Okay, here we go. We are good, ladies and gentlemen. Hall side doors locked root lock released. Yeah, I'll be most curious to see how Resident Evil 2 Remake will uh, fare when it comes to bringing the scares. I hope, I hope the, I hope the whole game is as phenomenal as the trailers make it out to be. But as I've learned throughout my life, a trailer can you can edit a trailer to look absolutely phenomenal if you know what you're doing, but. Playing the actual thing itself, that's that's when you'll truly know whether or not it's as good as it looks. Probably speaking common sense here, but, well. I've recently uh, learned the hard way to uh, never buy into the hype of, of anything. And just wait and see how something performs when it comes out. No Man's Sky, when it first came out, is a perfect example of that. Not that I ever bought and played the game, but boy, howdy, am I glad I didn't. That's all I'm going to say on that. Police memor... Mem blah, blah, blah. Excuse me. Police Memorandum. August 23rd, 1998. This letter is just to inform everyone about the recent movement of equipment that has happened during the precinct's rearrangement. The safe of four-digit lock can bot with <clears throat> can I can't read today. The safe of four-digit lock has been moved from the star's office on the second floor to the eastern office on the first floor. Two two three six, Raccoon Police Liaison Department. <coughs> Okay, we got that filed. Well, I'm glad I have a, f I'm glad I have a little uh, file holder thing to look at my memos. Otherwise, well, I would have to write all this crap down, like I would, like I would used to with a lot of games I played as a kid. Uh, okay, we have absolutely no items whatsoever. No first aid kits, no additional ammunition, nothing. That's okay, though. I'm sure we can manage this fine. There's an office over by the reception desk. Should be where our officer is right now. Nothing out of the ordinary. Nothing special here. The desk is locked. Let's use the lockpick. Well, would you look at that? We got a first aid spray. There's nothing more. Hmm. That obviously wasn't a crow. I don't think it was a gorilla either. I'm sure it will induce a lot of headaches for us all. I hear something. Also, I love how upon entering this uh, hallway, the first angle you see is this window right here. Like, great way to build suspense. Nothing unusual here. Like, as though it might just burst out at you from the window or something. At least that's what I first thought when I first played this. There appear to be discarded files inside. Well, I would suggest you look through them, but, well, I think you should get out of here as soon as you can. Yep, there's a source of our dripping. The head is missing. It seems to have been twisted off. Definitely not a good sign. An open and close switch for the shutter. It can't be activated since the cord is cut. Lovely. It's locked. A spade is etched under the keyhole.
You certainly are a lot more threatening in appearance than your average zombie. Luckily for me, though, I know how to deal with you. Come on. I definitely need to... Relying on that lock on features from the last game is going to be the death of me. Well, could be going off to a better start here. I already used that first aid spray, and I already used all the crossbow ammunition I've got. Nothing special. Those, that thing's got some killer abs, though. Shame it's not got some skin to cover it. The window is boarded up. Okay, we got a room in here we can go in. Got our first aid spray in here I can use. That'd be lovely. This looks like a meeting slash conference room. Or at least a meeting room. Empty soda cans and junk, nothing else. Don't they ever throw away their trash. I mean, it's just, un it's just unsightly, just leaving soda cans lying around all over the place. It looks like there was a recent accident here. Well, what kind of accident? Could you be more specific? Hey, I see something. Operation Report. Operation Report, September 26. The Raccoon Police Department was unexpectedly attacked by zombies. Many have been injured. Even more were killed. During the attack, our communications equipment was destroyed, and we no longer have contact with the outside. How was it destroyed? We have decided to carry out an operation with the intent of rescuing any possible survivors, as well as to prevent this disaster from spreading beyond Raccoon City. And... okay. Before I comment, I'll just see what the details of your plan are. The details of the operation are as follows. Security of armaments and ammunition. Chief Irons has voiced concern regarding the issue of terrorism due to a series of recent unresolved incidents. On the very day before the zombies' attack, he made the decision to relocate all weapons to scattered intervals throughout the building as a temporary measure to prevent their possible seizure. Unfortunately, this decision has made it extremely difficult for us to locate all ammunition caches. No, really? But, then again, shouldn't you like keep a list of where all these locations are? I mean, that would make sense. I mean, who, who else is really going to know except for people on the police force, or at least authorized members of the police force? Just talk to the Talk to the person here who would know where they're all located in case you need ammo, and then boom, problem solved. Don't see why you'd need to just basically hide everything here without really having any idea, without any means here to easily locate it. It's kind of dumb. It has become our top priority to recover these scattered munitions. To unlock the weapons stored. As stated earlier, it will be extremely difficult to secure all the ammunition. However, a considerable supply still remains in the underground weapon storage. Unfortunately, the person in charge of the card key used to access the weapon storage is missing, and we have been unable to locate the key. Break the door down. One of the, one of the breakers went down during the battle, and the electronic locks are not functioning in certain areas. 
It has become a top priority to restore the power in the power room and secured those locks. Recorder David Ford. So your plan is basically to gather as much weapons and ammunition as possible. And once you do that, then you'll have the means to stop this zombie attack and th this virus from spreading beyond Raccoon City. I really don't think you guys have thought this through. Operation Report, September 27th. 1 p.m. The West Barricade has been broken through and another exchange ensued. We sheltered the injured in the confiscation room on the first floor temporarily. Twelve more people were injured in the battle. Recorder, David Ford. Additional report. Three additional people were killed following the sudden appearance of an as-of-yet unknown creature. This creature is identified by missing patches of skin and razor-like claws. Basically the thing we just ran into. However, its most distinguishing characteristic is its lance-like tongue, capable of piercing a human torso in an instant. Their numbers as well as their location remains unknown. We have tentatively named this creature the Licker, and are currently in the process of developing countermeasures to deal with this new threat. I think you're going to need to call the National Guard and the CDC to deal with this sort of thing, and come to think of it, why hasn't the CDC or the National Guard really intervened on a, on a large scale level if whatever's, if this zombie attack is as bad as it clearly is outside? Questions, questions, questions. I see a suit of ar suits of armor in here. It's a fireplace. An oil painting hangs above it. The title is A Sacrifice to the Hellfire. What a lovely painting to have in a room in a, a conference room. Or to be fair, it's not actually in the room itself, but still. Okay, I'm not seeing anything in here besides that memo. So I'm gonna move on. Get off me! Oh shit. Okay, I'm gonna try to go back down there because I know that there's a room down there I can access. Oh boy. I forgot that they can leap in this game. Okay, I'm still fine health-wise. But yeah, I'm just uh, making quick retreats here just to uh, reset their standing positions. Otherwise, I'd just get stun-locked to death by these things. We got three green herbs, so I can make a uh, three gerb, gerb, three herb mixture, and it will have the same effect as having a first aid spray. So, not too bad, all things considered. 
but I'm not going to mix them. I'm going to hang on to them just in case I find like some red herbs or something later. It's locked. A special kind of key is required. Found some more ink ribbons though. Got some more handgun ammunition. And I see a memo right here. And we got an item box in that corner there. Operation Report 2. Operation Report, September 28th. Early morning, 2.30 a.m. Zombies overran the operation room and another battle broke out. We lost four more people, including David. Poor guy. We're down to four people, including myself. We failed to secure the weapons cache and hope for our survival continues to diminish. We won't last much longer. We agreed upon a plan to escape through the sewer. There's a path leading from the precinct underground to the sewage disposal plant. We should be able to access the sewers through there. The only drawback is that there is no guarantee the sewage disposal plant is free of any possible dangers. Yeah, that is something to consider. We know our chances in the sewers are slim, but anything is better than simply waiting here to die. Won't get, you wouldn't get any argument from me there. In order to buy more time, we lock the only door leading to the underground, which is located in the eastern office. We left the key behind in the western office since it's unlikely that any of those creatures have the intelligence to find it and unlock the door. I pray that this operation report will be helpful to whomever may find it. Recorder, Elliot Edward. It will most certainly be helpful to me indeed, good sir. And while it's unlikely that you made it out, I hope you survived. Got a dark room for photo development here. I can develop film here. Okay, I'm going to put these herbs in here. I'm also going to put my knife. And I think I'll hold on to the crossbow for now. I'll also save while I'm at it. An old typewriter. You can save your progress with this. Let's use the ink ribbon. Okay. So, nowhere to go but up, since I know that the door down the uh, end of the hallway on the floor I'm at is locked. So, let's go upstairs. Okay, I got 56 rounds, and let me see if I can... Okay, I can reload this way. Good to know. Like I said earlier, I'm just taking time to relearn all the mechanics of this game since it's been a while since I played. Well, at least there's no zombies in here from the looks of it. The knob turns, but the door won't budge. It seems to be sealed from the other side. It looks like there's a hole underneath that door. What an interesting statue. Something is written on the mounting. The god of sun and the god of moon. Their gaze upon me is the only thing that can re release red soul. Obviously, you talk, you mean that little gem you're holding. So, let's go ahead and have these two lovely deities stare at you. The way that you want them to. One down. All 
right, Mr. Sun. Let's go ahead and put you over here. And here we go. Your soul is mine, sir. Thank you very much. No, 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 not that. A blood red jewel about the size of a fist. I wonder what kind of crystal it is. Looks like a bucket and a mop. A couple of our clean supplies here. Clearly this place does not have a dedicated maintenance closet. Or at least this part of the station. And hello, I see the star's office right here. Hey Chris, your kid sister's come to see you. Care to explain why you work in a hellhole filled with zombies? Nothing suspicious nor out of the ordinary. We got a grenade launcher. Yeah, I'll take you. There are various devices. This must be where they gather information. Yeah, radio communication radio thing. Several files from past cases. Nothing useful here. There are unopened cardboard boxes. It looks like a rookie's desk. Hmm. Rookie. A first aid pack. Most likely Rebecca's desk, if I had to guess. There are no. Can I not look into the little first aid pack? Might be something useful in there. picture of a young man. There's a good chance it's her boyfriend. And I know that jacket. It looks a lot like the jacket you're wearing, Claire. The desk is disorganized and untidy. It probably reflects the owner's personality. <laughs> I can very strongly believe that, Claire. Chris's diary. August 8th. I talked to the chief today once again, but he refused to listen to me. I know for certain that Umbrella conducted T-virus research in that mansion. Anyone infected turns into a zombie. But the entire mansion went up in that explosion, along with any incriminating evidence. What about all those files you collected? Didn't you hold on to those? Since Umbrella employs so many people in town, no one is willing to talk about the incident. It looks like I'm running out of options. Yeah, it would be pretty hard to talk about something scandalous about a big company that happens to employ most of the people in the place you live in. They would very much like it if you were to stay, keep certain things hush hush. Or else. August 17th. We've been receiving a lot of local reports about strange monsters appearing at random throughout the city. This must be the work of Umbrella. August 24th. With the help of Jill and Barry, I finally obtained information vital to this case. Umbrella has begun research on the new G virus, a variation of the original T virus. Haven't they done enough damage already? Obviously not. And lovely, a new virus to play with. I wonder what it does. We talked it over, and have decided to fly to the main Umbrella HQ in Europe. 
I won't tell my sister about this trip because doing so could put her in danger. Please forgive me, Claire. I don't know. I think she would have been in danger regardless because clearly uh, Umbrella has a shit ton of resources available to it. If they wanted to threaten you, they'd probably go after your family and closest friends, regardless of whether they actually knew anything, just on the off chance that it might put a stop to whatever you try to do. Because when you're a big corporate, big corporate or government entity that has no moral scruples whatsoever, and you want to uh, stop someone who does have a sense of a moral code from doing something against you, then you go after the things that they very desperately don't want to lose. And that obviously includes family. Must be the unicorn that that little, uh, that that little fountain thing in the uh, main hall was referencing. I will take you with me. Obviously, we'll need to go back that way. It appears to be a replica of a gun. The owner is probably a member of the NRA. Must be Barry. There isn't anything useful on this shelf. More handgun bullets. That's always welcome. A picture of the stars members. I see Chris, Jill, Barry, Brad, Richard. The other people I don't recognize. And obviously sunglasses at night, right but right behind Jill. Speaking of sunglasses at night, this is his desk. It's trashed. Someone must have searched the desk. I'm going to examine this desk 50 times, I think, I need to do. The reason I'm going to uh, do that is because if you search this desk 50 times, again, I don't know if that's the right number off the top of my head, but if you search this desk, desk desk if you search this desk enough times you'll find a little surprise There we go. I got some film. And I know just the place to take it to develop it. There are various trophies. One of them reads, Marksman Contest Winner, Chris, Chris Redfield. Okay, I think that's everything. I know the fax machine still works. Federal Police Department Internal Investigation Report. Mr. Chris Redfield, Raccoon City Police Department, Stars Division. As per your request, we have conducted our internal investigation and discovered the following information. Number one, regarding the G virus currently under development by Umbrella Inc. So far, it is unconfirmed that the G virus even exists. We're continuing with our investigation. Number two. Regarding Mr. Brian Irons, chief of the Raccoon City Police Department. Mr. Irons has allegedly received a large sum of funds and bribes from um Umbrella Inc. over the last five years. He was apparently involved in the cover-up of the Mansion Lab case along with several other incidents in which Umbrella appears to have direct involvement. Mr. Irons has been, had been arrested under suspicion of rape on two separate counts during his years as a university student. 
He underwent psychiatric evaluation as a result of the charges, but was released due to circumstantial evidence, as well as his phenomenal academic standing. Well, and yet this guy somehow managed to uh, become chief of police in this place. I see nothing wrong here. Nothing wrong whatsoever. As such, extreme, extreme caution is advised when, in, when dealing with him. Jack Hamilton, Section Chief, Internal Investigations, United States Federal Police Department. Why not just say FBI? The mail to Chris has been filed. So, a, a corrupt police chief that managed to get to where he is just because he got brought home a few good report cards in, from his university days. And is involved, likely involved in corruption with Umbrella. Definitely would, would, that would definitely explain why the case was dropped, even if we had the evidence to prove that something did happen. And again... How exactly does a guy like that become chief of police? It is truly a mystery. Anyway. Oh, I forgot to uh, look down this hall. locked. A spade is etched under the keyhole. Okay, so another spade and another spade thing. Small ventilation shaft. It's far too small for an adult to fit into. Obviously, I will need to find a key with a spade on it if I want to unlock the, this door. Keys, which, keys that ha have unique shapes to them. I'm already getting flashbacks to the first game. Might as well go ahead and go and uh, develop that film that I found in uh, Wesker's desk. Because why the hell not? I mean, I went to all the trouble of getting it, so. Might as well see what's on it. Recruit. Hello, Rebecca. Film D has been filed. What an interesting uh, f picture of Rebecca to have in your desk, sunglasses at night. I think I'm going to go ahead and cut the episode off here. I hope you enjoyed this uh, episode of Resident Evil 2. I look forward to covering more of this game. And maybe after uh, we uh, put this unicorn metal thing into that fountain in the main hall, it will uh, cause something good to happen that will allow us to progress forward. Plus, we have that other door in the hallway that I also unlocked that I have yet to go through and explore as well. So, we got plenty of exploring to do all around. Anyway, if you like this episode of Resident Evil 2 and you want to see more content from me, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I will see you guys next time. Take care.